Today we're going to practice uh, writing ternary ionic compounds as formulas and as well as names. So the first one that we have here is going to be calcium carbonate. Calcium, I see, is going to be Ca. It is in the first two columns, which would make it representative, which is good because I do not have a oxidative state there. So I'm just going to go ahead and take Ca and then I will figure out what its charge is. Since calcium is in the first two columns, it is going to have uh, two valence electrons as it's in column two. And since it has two valence electrons, it is going to go ahead and donate those two valence electrons rather than steal six. So calcium carbonate, uh, my calcium is going to have a charge of positive two. Then uh, carbonate, that eight tells me that I am going to be a polyatomic ion. So I'm going to flip inside of my periodic table. I will find carbonate, and I will find that its formula is CO3, negative 2. And then I will write them together. Then I will exchange charges for subscripts. Calcium's 2 will become carbonate's 2. And if I write it like this, you'll see that this looks like I have 32 oxygens. That's incorrect. I am just going to have two carbonates, so I will protect carbonate with parentheses. Then I will take carbonate 2 and I will give it to calcium. And that would give me a ratio of 2 to 2. The ratio of 2 to 2 is not the lowest possible ratio for this compound. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to simplify this to just CaCO3 as the ratio of 2 to 2 will simplify to 1 to 1. Next, I have barium nitrate. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to find barium. Barium is going to be Ba. It is in column 2A again. And since it is in column 2A, I know that it is going to have a charge of positive 2, meaning that it's giving away two valence electrons. Nitrate, that 8 tells me that I am a polyatomic ion. So I will go ahead and I will look for nitrate on my list of common polyatomic ions, and I will find it as NO3, negative 1. And then I will go ahead and write them together. Barium's 2 become, becomes nitrate's 2. Since I have to have multiple polyatomics, I will protect it in parentheses. And then nitrates 1 will become barium's 1, but I don't write 1s, so I can go ahead and move on. Next, I have a silver nitrate. I have to find silver on the periodic table. And when I find silver on the periodic table, AG, element number 47, I see that it is not in the first two columns, but I didn't have an oxidative state, so that would make it part of a cadzenagel. So since it is part of uh, Kazanigo, I need to actually remember what its charge is. There is a little bit of a trick. Uh, cadmium, zinc, silver, and aluminum kind of form a little mini staircase here. And since silver is that first stair step on uh, my little mini Kazanigo staircase, I know that silver is going to have a charge of plus one. So I will go ahead and write a G and then positive one. And then I just need to find nitrate. Again, 8 means that it's going to be a polyatomic ion. I will look inside. I will find nitrate as NO3, negative 1. And I will write it down. Now I'm going to go ahead and write them together. AG, NO3. And I will exchange charges for subscripts. Nitrates 1 becomes silvers 1. I don't write 1s. Silvers 1 becomes nitrates 1s. I don't write 1s. So that means AgNO3 is my final formula. Iron 2 phosphate is my next compound. Iron is going to be Fe. It is element number 26. And iron 2 means I, that I have a charge of 2. Phosphate 8 means that I am a polyatomic ion. So I will go ahead and flip inside and try to find phosphate. I found phosphate as PO4, negative 3. And then I will write them together. I will exchange charges for subscripts. Irons 2 will become phosphates 2, which means I need to protect phosphate within parentheses. Phosphates 3 will become irons 3, which will uh, just be written there. And the ratio 3 to 2 cannot be simplified any further, so Fe3, PO4, 2 is the correct formula for iron 2 phosphate. 
Next I have a uh, chromium four phosphate. Chromium four means that I am going to be a transition metal and chromium is going to be CR. Chromium four means that I have a charge of four. Phosphate is going to be a polyatomic ion. Inside the periodic table, I can find phosphate and see that phosphate is going to have the formula of FPO4, three negative. Then I will write them together. I will exchange charges for subscripts. Chromium's four will become phosphate's four, so I will protect phosphate within parentheses and write that four on the outside of those. And then I will take phosphate's three and give it to chromium, and that would turn the formula into Cr3PO44. The ratio three to four cannot be simplified any further, so Cr3PO44 will be uh, chromium four phosphate's formula and I can go ahead and move on to ammonium nitrate. Now, if you try to find ammonium on the periodic table, you will not find it. That is because ammonium is one of our exceptions to the uh, nomenclature rules of polyatomic ions. Ammonium is going to be uh, one of my two main exceptions to the polyatomic ion uh, nomenclature rules of ending in it or eight. Ammonium is going to be my one and only positive polyatomic ion as well, so it is uh, special in two ways. So ammonium is going to be NH4 and it will have a charge of positive one. And then nitrate, that eight still tells me that I am a polyatomic ion, so I will go ahead and I will find nitrate. Nitrate is going to be NO3 negative one. And I will write these together. So NH4, NO3, and then I will exchange charges for subscripts. Uh, ammonium's one will become nitrate's one. Don't need to write it. Nitrate's one will become ammonium's one. Again, don't need to write it. So my next and last uh, set of uh, names that I will be turning into formulas, I have copper one chlorate and I have copper two chlorate. So copper one tells me that I am a transition metal. So I need to find copper. Copper is going to be element number 29 and it is going to be Cu for its uh, symbol. So copper one tells me that I have a charge of positive one and chlorate, I know that since I have an eight, I am going to be a polyatomic ion. Chlorate has the formula of ClO3, negative one. And then I can go ahead and write them together. Copper's one becomes chlorate's one, don't need to write it. Chlorate's one becomes copper's one, don't need to write it. So CuClO3 is going to be my final formula for uh, copper one chlorate. Now we're gonna see how that uh, is different for copper two chlorate. Copper two, I know that copper is going to be Cu. That two means that this version of copper is going to have a positive two oxidative state. Chlorate, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna steal from the previous example and I'm going to keep it as ClO3 negative one. When I write these together, it will look the same here, but I need to still exchange charges for subscripts. So copper's two will become chlorate's two, which means I need to protect chlorate within parentheses and go ahead and give it that two. And then uh, chlorate's one will become copper's one, but I don't need to write it. So my difference here, because copper uh, one and copper two, they have different oxidative states, they will result in different compound formulas. So just make sure that you are aware that those oxidative states, they do matter. Okay, so now I'm going to go from uh, formula to name. I need to find K first. K is going to be my metal, my cation, and it is going to be potassium. Since it is within the first two columns, I do not need to calculate oxidative states. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write potassium. And then I need to find OH on my list of uh, polyatomic ions. So on my list of polyatomic ions, I'm gonna find OH and I will see that that is secretly hydroxide. One of my other uh, polyatomic ions that breaks that uh, ending in eight or it rule. And uh, 
hydroxide is already my anion name for that polyatomic ion, so potassium hydroxide is going to be my final name for that compound. Now next I have CaNO32. I need to find who Ca is. Ca is going to be calcium. Calcium was in the first two columns, which makes it a representative metal, so I do not need to find oxidative states. And then I know that NO3 is going to be my polyatomic ion because it is within those parentheses. It is also uh, nonmetals, which gives me a hint as well. So I will try to find NO3. When I find NO3, I see that that is secretly nitrate. Nitrate is uh, one is already the anion name for this compound, so I don't need to change anything. Next, I have um, two more compounds. I have PbNO34. I need to figure out who Pb is, so we'll go ahead and look on that periodic table and I will try to find Pb. When I find Pb, I see that Pb is lead. It is not in the first two columns, nor is it part of Kadzenigl which means that I am going to have to figure out oxidative states. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to write lead, and then I will give myself an open set of parentheses to remind myself that I do have to go back and do that uh, oxidative state calculation. And then I will try to find NO3 on my list of polyatomic ions. Again, those parentheses give me a hint that I'm going to need to search there. When I find NO3, I see that that is going to be nitrate. So I will go ahead and I will name this lead something nitrate, and now I just need to figure out what that something is. When I do my uh, oxidative state calculation, I'm going to compare anions to cations. I will start with my anion information first, and that will help me figure out the information for my cation. So my anion is going to be nitrate. Nitrate's charge is going to be negative one, and I have four of them. This four is the count of the total number of polyatomic ions that I have, and I have four nitrates, so that is going to be my subscript is four. Four times negative one is going to be negative four. Equal and opposite of negative four is going to be four. I only have one lead present, as I don't have any subscript there. One times something is four. One times four is four. From Arabic to Roman, from parenthesis to parenthesis, I will go ahead and I will write the Arabic, or sorry, the Roman numeral inside of the name here, which will turn this into lead for nitrate, which is the correct compound name. CuOH2 is my next compound. I need to figure out who Cu is. I will go ahead and I will look on the periodic table and I will find Cu within the transition metals. It's not in the first two columns, nor is it part of Cadzenagel, which means I do need to uh, go ahead and put those oxidative state parentheses after copper, which is who Cu is. To remind myself, I do need to do that math. Now I just need to find who OH is. OH is going to be hydroxide which is already the anion name, so I don't need to do anything. And now I just need to find that uh, oxidative state. So I have a total of two hydroxide ions, that parenthesis telling me how many I have. Each hydroxide has a charge of negative one. 2 times negative 1 is going to give me negative 2. Equal and opposite of negative 2 will give me positive 2. I only have one copper, which uh, will help me figure out what my charge is. 1 times something equals 2. 1 times 2 equals 2. From Arabic to Roman, from parenthesis to parenthesis, I will write the Roman numeral for 2, and that will be my compound name for CuOH2. That is going to be copper 2 hydroxide. Next, I am going to have... Uh, NaNO3. I need to find out who Na is. Na is going to be sodium. It is in the first column, which means that it is going to be representative, and I can go ahead and just write sodium. Then I can just go ahead and figure out who NO3 is and write down its name straight. So NO3, that is going to be nitrate, and I am done. So sodium nitrate is that compound. 
NH4CL. This is going to be one that you are going to need to be familiar with uh, different polyatomic ions, what they look like and where they're going to be. NH4 is that uh, very special one positive polyatomic ion, and that is going to be ammonium. It's why it comes first, even though NH4 is uh, made up of nonmetals only. This is actually going to be functioning as my cation. So it is going to be ammonium. And then Cl is going to be just straight from the periodic table. It's not a polyatomic ion, so I just need to find it. And I see that Cl is secretly chlorine. Chlorine's anion name is going to be chloride. So this will be uh, ammonium chloride. My last two uh, formulas that I will turn into names, the things that I will name now are going to be FeOH3. So I do need to find Fe. When I find Fe, I see that it is element number 26, and that is going to be iron. So we'll go ahead and I will write iron. When I found iron, it was within that transition metal block. It was not in the first two columns, which means that I do need those uh, oxidative state parentheses to help me remember to do that math. And I just need to figure out who OH is. When I look inside the periodic table, I find OH is going to be hydroxide. And now I just need to actually do that uh, anion versus cation, that oxidative state math to help me. So we have our anion and our cation. Okay, I have three total hydroxides. Each hydroxide is going to have a charge of negative one. Three times negative one is gonna give me negative three. Equal and opposite of negative three is gonna be positive three. I have one total iron. One times something equals three. One times three equals three. From Arabic to Roman, from parenthesis to parenthesis, I will go ahead and I will transfer that charge of positive three into my name and call that compound iron three hydroxide. Now my very last practice problem, I have NH42 CO3. NH4, again, is going to be my very special, my one and only positive polyatomic ion, and that is going to be ammonium. And then CO3, I just need to find out who CO3 is. CO3 is going to be carbonate. And since these were both polyatomic ions, it made uh, the actual nomenclature really easy, and I am done.